All right, let's talk about one of the most common causes of set point elevation that I see in my practice, medications. So let's first discuss how medications can cause weight gain. They don't have any calories. How could they cause weight gain if they don't have any calories? And a lot of people will think, well, they're gonna stimulate your appetite. And by stimulating your appetite, they'll cause you to consume more calories. They'll decrease your metabolism, slow your metabolic rate, um, or they could release hormones that trigger fat storage. But in essence, the way they're all gonna work and the way I think about them is that they, they will cause your set point to go up. Whether that set point goes up at predominantly because of increasing hunger or a slow metabolism or something more downstream like the, the way fat is stored um, is really irre is, is irrelevant. Um, what, we're, what we have to think about them as is they just cause the set point to go up. So there's some categories that we should watch out for. Um, contraception, steroids, mood stabilizing, chronic pain, diabetes, and sleep medicines. And we're gonna go over each one of those um, individually so that you can get a, a general in, um, guide. Now I think before we get started, if you see that a medication you take is on this list, that does not mean you should stop it immediately. What it means is you should speak to your physician about this and let him or her know how important weight loss is to you and how you believe that this medication may or may not be interfering with your ability to lose weight. So this, this all has to be done under the guidance of your physician. Some of these medications you can't just stop immediately. Um, and so please, if you're going to, if you wanna make a change in your medication regimen, do it with the guidance of your physician. So the first one we'll talk about is Depo-Provera. This is an injection that you get every uh, three months or so uh, that works as a long-acting contraceptive agent. It's actually very useful in, in treating patients with um, polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, or some irregular periods um, because it can help keep the hormones at a much steadier state. Uh, but essentially what it does is it tricks your body into thinking that you're pregnant and we all know during pregnancy you gain weight. So this doesn't cause weight gain in every single patient but it does in most. In my experience I've seen many many women over the years who've gained 30, 40, 50 pounds or more as a result of Depo-Provera. In general, I don't think this is the best way to treat polycystic ovarian syndrome um, because the weight gain that it can cause will actually make the PCOS much worse. Uh, and as a contraceptive method, it really, to me, is something that anyone who's interested in maintaining their body weight should try to avoid. Now, that does not mean that, the, that birth control pills are gonna cause the same effect. In fact, most birth control pills don't cause a lot of weight gain at all. But Depo-Provera um, has kind of these unique properties. Another very common medicine that I see is steroids. Now there's some patients who are on steroids cr uh, chronically, patients with autoimmune disorders like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. Um, and the chronic long-term exposure to steroids will cause weight gain in everybody. And it, causes it in a very characteristic um, manner, you, um, predominantly in the abdomen. Uh, and, and this is something that's very worrisome for anyone who's a, who has to be on chronic steroids. And thankfully, we've got a lot of new medications for treatment of these disorders that don't cause weight gain. And someone who's on these should really make absolutely sure that this is the only way that they can control their, their um, disease. But far and away, the more common uh, situation where I see steroids being used is in these short tapers or bursts to treat an asthma flare or bronchitis flare or a skin disorder or oftentimes something that is really not critical that we um, get aggressive with and will go away on its own with time. And the steroids may only shorten the course often only by a few days. And while one single five or seven day course of steroids is probably not gonna cause a lot of weight gain, what I see in a lot of patients is, is that they're put on a course of these steroids three, four, five times a year. And when you're, when you're taking these, these um, short bursts of steroids, which often have high doses in them, that frequently, uh, you certainly can cause weight gain. Um, and, and I think it's really important if, you, if you're starting to take a steroid, either for a short period or are on one already, that you speak with your physician and make absolutely certain that this is the only way. And also make certain you have a good understanding of how much this is gonna help. If you're doing it for an asthma flare, and the physician says, you know, we could probably shorten this difficulty in breathing you're having by a week. Well, then you have a decision to make. How important is it that you shorten that asthma exacerbation by a week? 
Is it really important? Do you have something coming up that, that you really need to take the medicine for and you really need to get better for? Okay, do it. But if you say, you know, I could probably tough this out for another week. I don't want to increase my risk of, of gaining weight. Um, then at least you know and you've made an educated decision. Mood stabilizing agents, particularly those that are used for bipolar disease, um, are a very common cause of weight gain and um, really explain why a lot of patients who suffer from bipolar disorder are overweight. Uh, we also find in our weight loss surgery literature that patients who have bipolar disorder tend to lose less weight afterward. I'm pretty convinced that this is due to the medications. Now this often creates a really difficult dilemma to solve um, because bipolar disorder when untreated can be extremely debilitating. It can impact your family relationship, your marriage, your professional relationship. But when it's treated, you can live a very normal life and have uh, normal relationships and really get the same satisfaction and joy out of life that everybody else does. Um, we're, we're, we've come a long way in treating this medication. Um, so we always have this really difficult balance. On one hand, we've kind of stabilized someone's mood, which in my mind takes priority over their body weight. Um, but on the other hand, they're starting to gain weight as a result of it. Now, um, a couple of notes on that. First of all, oftentimes when I see patients like that, I will put them on metformin, which is another medication which can often blunt the weight gain caused by other medications. Um, so there may be some other, you know, essentially fighting fire with fire. If uh, bipolar medication is causing weight gain, if we add metformin to it, we may be able to stabilize that weight gain. Um, the second is just, I, I urge you to speak to your psychiatrist, your primary care doctor, or whoever's managing your bipolar medication, and ensure that you really have tried other regimens that may be more weight neutral and have come to the conclusion that this is far and away the best regimen for you and you've optimized your weight. And in someone who has well-controlled bipolar disorder, I really don't urge them to make a change even if that is causing weight gain. Um, what I really let them know is that it's, it's going to be a factor, but it's not going to make or break your ability to lose weight. And so it's something we have to know about and manage but it doesn't prevent you from succeeding. Um, chronic pain medications, specifically Neurontin and Lyrica, uh, also known as Gabapentin and Pregabalin, um, they, they're uncommon causes of weight gain. Most patients don't um, gain weight from them. There, there's a huge uh, range in the doses that patients will take. Some patients will take 200 milligrams of Neurontin, other 800 milligrams several times a day. So we can see huge ranges, and what we find is that there is a dose-dependent relationship. So if you're on a very high dose of these medications, then yes, they may be contributing to weight gain. At low dose, I really haven't seen too much weight gain, um, but it certainly is something to talk to your physician about. And these medications also, you cannot just stop. You have to wean yourself off them. This has to be done with the guidance of a physician. Um, don't do this yourself. Um, insulin is a particularly tricky medication and one that I think is really important to address. And what happens is insulin triggers fat storage as it lowers your blood sugar and it's used to treat diabetics. So in diabetic patients what we often get is that they're put on insulin which causes weight gain. Which of course worsens their diabetes and forces them to be placed on more insulin. And we kind of get this positive feedback loop where you put on insulin, it causes weight gain, which makes you increase your insulin dose, which causes you to gain more weight. And this positive feedback loop is really something that's very dangerous because it can cause rapid weight gain and, and worsening of your diabetes. So the, the key is really to break this spiral in anyone who has significant diabetes. And one of my goals, whenever a, a patient who's on insulin walks in my office, my number one goal for that patient is to get them off of insulin as quickly as possible. And the truth is, while weight loss surgery is incredibly effective at this, you can also achieve it um, at least, if not all the way, but achieve a lot of reduction in the insulin dose through nutritional change and a little bit of exercise. And through, through using our Pound of Cure program, I've gotten hundreds of patients off insulin without surgery. Um, and that's certainly something that we're going to talk about in later videos and is something that if you are on insulin that you really recognize how uh, um, much of an influence this, this medication is having on your ability to lose weight. And we essentially have to break the, spike, the spiral, reduce your demand for insulin so we can lower the dose. This is something that you should do under the guidance of a physician um, because 
we can see within a week people needing to cut their insulin dose in half or even more just by changing the way they eat. And too much insulin can cause your blood sugar to drop, which can be dangerous or even deadly. Sleep medications are another common cause of, of uh, weight gain. Now, not all sleep medications um, will do this, but two in particular, trazodone and risperidone, uh, which are actually antipsychotic medications, but are fantastic sleep medicines. They'll put you to sleep and keep you to sleep through the whole night. The big downside is they can cause a lot of weight gain. And so I would, I would urge you, if you're on these medications, to talk to your physician about stopping them um, and switching to other regimens. I find Benadryl to be a really helpful sleep aid. Um, but even more importantly, I think good sleep hygiene, avoiding screens in the evening, um, not eating after a certain time period, um, making sure that your um, pillows are adequate and your mattress is good, um, and, and just generally doing some, um, some things that, you, that will help put you in, the, in, in a good place to be able to sleep well through the night that don't require any medicine at all. Oftentimes, that can get you halfway there. And it's a little bit of work and it's gonna require some change, but if the medication's causing a lot of weight gain and that's the only thing that you can use to get to sleep, I think it's worth it to make these changes. So again, most importantly, work with your, with your physician um, on both, both ends of your um, medication list. First, anytime you're given a new prescription, ask your, ask your um, uh, physician, does this medication have a side effect of weight gain? And now with the availability of drug information online, everybody can do this search. Now just because it says it causes weight gain, that does not mean it's gonna cause weight gain for you. Each medicine will, will do that in some people, but not in everyone. But speak with your physician, say, will this cause weight gain? What can we do if it's going to cause weight gain? Are there other options that are less likely to cause me to gain weight? Uh, and really be proactive and upfront uh, rather than just say, oh, okay, let's start a new medicine. Um, secondly, do not adjust medications on your own. Um, and, and I think this is, is really, again, I've made this point already in the video, but it's critical. Do this under the guidance of the physician. This is something that requires the uh, close observation and there's a lot of subtleties that I can't express in this video about how you should go about managing these medications. Um, and then I think finally a lot of people will be told, you know, yeah, it can cause weight gain, but if you really just buckle down and, and watch your diet, it's not going to. And what we find with this idea of your set point is that's just not true. That willpower can't overcome physiology. And to put that type of pressure on yourself is to set yourself up for failure and significant emotional disappointment. So if that's the rationale between, be, uh, about why you can avoid weight gain for a medication, then I would really seriously doubt that and, and might want to think twice about starting that medication. Thanks.